Let's talk about male contraception, uh, where we stand specifically. I want to I want to make it clear uh, from here going on that my videos are going to focus on or or focus on the implied uh, assertion that there most certainly is a gender war. Men and women are social, uh, a separate social economic uh, class, and uh, are most certainly uh, in direct economic competition with each other for jobs, for uh, for for education, for health care, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're, we're not concerned here about uh, striking up a bargain with women, uh, fixing the nuclear family, that's already dead, and uh, a any of those other things. We are concerned directly with uh, making sure that women cannot leverage their power against men ever again in the same fashion, meaning that they can never uh, use the courts again to, to extort men uh, because they will never be able to trick a man into pregnancy again. Uh, via whatever means necessary we need to take that and in this case it's going to be the male pill now male contraception uh, for the men's rights activists is the quintessential technological milestone of our time I mean it's almost pointless to say uh, yet pointed out I shall that there's immense power uh, to be gained in the development of an effective and safe form of male contraception uh, of higher efficacy than conventional prophylactics and confirmed reversibility as opposed to the invasive and permanent and cauterizing male vasectomy a man imbued with these powers of temporary infertility will find himself perched comfortably atop a pedestal of immunity high above the shifting sands of heavily biased child support courts which default to the presumption of motherhood in the overwhelming majority of child custody disputes uh, pregnancies planned and unplanned as well as the extortionary legalities surrounding them are routinely used by women as a means of legal theft against the fathers of their children uh, a man caught in the gears of the Western child support system can expect to pay a sizable chunk of his annual income to the mother as per the mandate of a court system that will more often than not refuse to enforce his visitation rights and provide to him no process of confirmation as to whether or not the money he pays to the mother is expended solely for the benefit of his children. Consider the following graph. Now, these are 2001 statistics, which are the most up-to-date I could find. Uh, but if anyone could find more recent statistics, uh, I'll be glad to post them in the link box. Uh, but these statistics from 2001 show us that a full 48% of American pregnancies are unplanned. It is a fact uh, that women with access to a plethora of effective birth control methods, uh, the female condom, the intrauterine device, the pill, the option to abort post-conception, they have complete control over when they have children. Uh, or whether or not they have children. Uh, the morning after pill can be had free of charge at your nearest Planned Parenthood. A woman, more so than a man, and more so than at any other point in history, has complete power over when she chooses to procreate. Knowing this, uh, that just under half of all pregnancies are unplanned at a time when women have so much control over their fertility. In a society where women can use children in custodial disputes to extract money from the fathers of their children, the conclusion must be drawn that a great many of these 48% of pregnancies are far from unplanned. Uh, meal tickets, uh, that's what many of these pregnancies are functioning as. Reproductive extortion against men on the part of dubious and dishonest women. Now, how can a man know which women may blindside him with one of these accidental pregnancies? He can't, and with the advent of male contraception, he won't need to. Again, we are interested in rendering women incapable of pulling the shit that they that we all know they're going to pull. Um, this isn't we're, we're not we're not going to grovel to women and ask, ask them to be nice to us. Uh, this is about preventing women um, by using any means necessary, scientific or otherwise, uh, preventing them from being able to uh, use the courts to leverage their reproductive power against men. So again, how can he know which women specifically are going to pull this? He can't, and with the advent of uh, male birth control, he won't need to. A man uh, in complete control of his fertility will find himself free and clear of this pesky 48 percentage, uh, free and clear of paternity fraud. He is free completely to never have children or to have a dozen all on his own terms. So it is imperative then that men keep a very watchful eye on the development of such a contraceptive. So we're going to give a short but, but far from complete list uh, on some of the more promising efforts currently underway. Let's talk about RISUG. Uh, you know, uh, unlike female contraceptives, which rely heavily on a hormonal approach to control infertility, RISUG, which stands for Reversible Inhibition of Sperm Under Guidance, uh, employs a method involving the use of a polymer formed by the chemical reaction of dimethyl sulfoxide with styrene, maleic, and hydride. 
Now, this polymer is injected into the vas deferentia where sperm travel through during ejaculation. It is believed, uh, though, though not confirmed, that the polymer, being an anhydride, uh, hydrolyzes on contact with water and spermatic fluid. This renders the polymer complex with a positive charge, which upon interaction with the negative charge of the sperm membrane renders them incapable of fertilization. Uh, the neutralization effect of the rice suck polymer can last at least a decade. And reversal is achieved by another injection of sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda solution into the vas deferens. Uh, although uh, it should be noted that reversibility up to this point has only been confirmed successfully uh, during primate study. Now, phase three clinical trials are currently underway in India under the auspices of the Indian Health Ministry, and is currently being marketed in the U.S. under the name Vassal Gel, uh, where it's just beginning clinical trials. And uh, regular updates are posted on the Vassal Gel Facebook page, uh, which, which, which I suggest you show your support for and comment and, and, and show that there is a very clear demand for such a thing uh, in, in the States. Now, the implications of RISUG uh, can indeed be far-reaching. It's low cost, it's minimally invasive, it's reversible, and it does not sever the vas deferens like a vasectomy would. Uh, the fact that RISUG allows for extended efficacy at extremely low cost doesn't bode well for pharmaceutical companies who would prefer a relatively expensive, pill-based, and more than likely hormonal method of contraception for men to bolden their bottom lines with. So that's something to keep in mind in predicting whether or not it will ever receive sufficient marketing here in the States. I think this is something that, if, if successful and safe, uh, men are going to have to promote on their own. But, but the market is there. It's completely there. Uh, unlike India, who uh, suffer from a dismal volunteer rate for phase three uh, clinical trials, uh, I believe that American men would be much more receptive to such procedure. But there are, uh, however, some, some pretty significant uh, major hurdles to be cleared before the safety of RISA can be confirmed up to American clinical trial and FDA standards. Now, dimethyl sulfoxide is marketed in class as a dietary supplement in America, allowing it to evade a more stringent inquiry by the Food and Drug Administration. Its carcinogenity and its teratogenicity have not been sufficiently determined to clinical trial standards. So only time and the required science will determine the safety of RISUG. Until then, we just have to wait. Uh, but I, th I think that if RISUG is proven to be safe, uh, it could revolutionize gender interaction. Uh, women would not be able to pull the oops, I'm pregnant uh, thing. It provides anonymity. You don't have to tell the woman that you're sleeping with or involved with uh, that you've had this procedure done. Uh, so essentially you can screen out the, the, the ones that would seek to pin, pin a child that isn't yours on you. Uh, if she all up and decides, oh, I'm pregnant um, and it's yours and you know you've had this procedure, well, you know, paternity fraud prevented right then and there. Uh, the implications could be vast. And uh, this, is, this is the method by which men are going to achieve the beginnings of, of reproductive equality with women. Uh, I'm extremely excited for it, needless to say. Uh, but next, we're going to focus on the genetic vasectomy. Uh, and, and vasectomy probably isn't, isn't the correct word, um, more like genetic contraception if, if, if the science is successful. Now, the Hutterites, uh, which are an Anabaptist communal religious sect similar to the Amish uh, that reject all forms of contraception and encourage large families amongst their people, have provided to modern science an ideal population to investigate the genetic causes of infertility. Now, scientists uh, conducting genetic study on Hutterite men with one or more children identified over 40 genetic regions responsible for influencing Hutterite male fertility, uh, many of which are, of course, universally related to fertility in all men. Uh, these fertility influencing genes were then examined in animal studies where rodents were given drugs that would cause genetic mutations relating to the suspected fertility influencing genes. The mice that displayed infertility after the administration of the drugs were then studied to see what genetic change occurred which caused infertility. It was found uh, that the gene CATNAL1, spelled K-A-T-N-A-L-1, uh, was essential in the formation of fertile sperm in mice. Uh, without the genetic information transcribed from this gene, a specific protein responsible for sperm maturation cannot form. It is believed uh, that, that CATNAL1 also has this same essential function in human sperm formation. So if a drug that inhibits the production of the protein that correlates to the CATNAL1 gene can be synthesized, we will have a functional male pill on our hands. And better yet, if advances in the science of gene therapy and epigenetics allow us to effectively silence the CATNAL1 gene expression altogether through 
uh, perhaps uh, histone modification or all of the other uh, kind of lofty uh, genetic manipulations that are going on in the field of epigenetics. We will, if, if that's successful, we will have a non-hormonal genetic vasectomy at our disposal. Now, of course, for such a procedure to be technically considered a contraceptive and not a vasectomy, it would have to allow for the repletion of the cat now one associated proteins. Uh, and scientists are predicting uh, such a form of contraception in five to 10 years. So uh, let's see. Of course, scientists make these kind of predictions all the time. Uh, none of us know where this is going to be headed, but I think it's, it's an extremely interesting approach to uh, male male contraception and even and even solving for for the men that are afflicted by the causes of male fertility uh, the cat now one gene expression and the protein that it, that it transcribes can of course be related to uh, causes of infertility in men if if they have some natural silencer of the cat now one gene uh, that, then perhaps uh, if we can find a drug that that boosts cat now one or, or, or artificially introduces cat now one protein uh, the protein that it's correlated to into the body, uh, perhaps this, this can cure infertility in men. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, very exciting and hopeful. I, I'm definitely going to be watching the progression of this in the future. Now let's move along to the next candidate, which is uh, contraception via ultrasound. James Surata, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but he's the assistant professor of pediatrics at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine uh, and has conducted a study on the effects of ultrasound on sperm production. And all, all of this all of this is going to be in the link box. Uh, you can click on the studies and, and see for yourself. But now he conducted a, a pretty interesting study uh, that, that's, that's admittedly in its beginning stages where it was found that mice uh, subjected to regular doses of ultrasound uh, produced sperm counts of of 3 million per milliliter of semen. Now in humans, uh, any sperm count under 20 million per milliliter is considered to be low. Uh, human sperm need very specific temperature conditions to retain its fertility. Uh, sperm cannot survive if it's exposed to temperatures exceeding past or decreasing below a, a very small temperature window of approximately 37 degrees Celsius. Now when undergoing an ultrasound, the targeted tissue vibrates as it comes into contact with sound waves. This creates heat which when applied to the testes of mice killed sperm on contact. Uh, the effect of the heat from the ultrasound is also believed to be working in concert with other factors that aren't completely understood. Uh, since the sperm levels of mice who received heating without ultrasound did not decrease as significantly as those that underwent the ultrasound treatment. So it's possible that the ultrasound may manipulate cell behavior and gene expression in the testes. Thus, until extensive and further animal studies are performed, there will be absolutely no human testing. I don't want any of you guys going out and buying one of those commercial <laughs> ultrasound machines and testing this on yourself. This is something that the safety of which is not, is not uh, confirmed. Uh, let the scientists do their work. Let the FDA approve this. Although, you know, these days the FDA is certainly not known for its... its, its integrity but let, let the clinical trials come out let the uh, let the years of uh, testing that this is going to require uh, take its course and then we will see where we stand and see these are just a few of the uh, of the of the many uh, technologies that are cropping up these days uh, or possible technologies that are cropping up these days that are showing promising signs of a real and effective approach to male contraception once we have this, I mean, I mean, the, the advent of the, of the pill isn't going to be a thunderclap event. Uh, it's going to be a gradual move towards the acceptance of, male ta of, of men taking control of their fertility and men finally starting to question women and, and their reproductive monopoly. Now, of course, men are still going to be attracted to women. Uh, none of this is going to change. We're still going to want sex. We're still going to want to be with women, all that. But at the same time, we will get a taste of what, it, of what reproductive power is. Uh, no longer will a woman be able to decide for us when we are going to uh, reproduce. And this is, there is great freedom tied up in this. And, uh, you know, like I've, like I've said before, I, I am not interested in, um, <laughs> you know, begging women to form families with us anymore, to, uh, to uh, you know, be nice to us. Uh, I, I'm happy. I am very happy for women that they uh, have their freedom to do whatever they want. I'm even happy for women that modern science has developed uh, a method for them to control their fertility. Now I want the same thing for men. Now up until this point, uh, we've talked about, we've only talked about uh, the, the science. We know that there are going to be very real repercussions for men pursuing this type of technology. 
Uh, people are going to try to shame you. People are going to try to imply that this is an attack on the family. You know, all of these kind of things designed to, to, to shame men back to their traditional roles. Uh, have none of that. Don't pay attention to it. Keep your eye on the prize. Uh, there's going to be a very real feminist effort to not only repress these technologies as they come to the fore, uh, but to silence and, and characterize men that are, that, are, that, that are pursuing this as some kind of freak, as some kind of anti-nature, anti-family types. Don't listen to any of that. Keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, we all remember when, uh, I believe it was Stardust, posted the video uh, featuring Dr. Elsimar Coutinho, who was a Brazilian endocrinologist and a human reproduction scientist who was attempting to develop a low-cost non-hormonal male contraceptive from an extract of Levant cotton. Now, now, as to the efficacy of this Levant cotton or the extract of it and whether or not it specifically can be considered a contraceptive, I've seen some studies saying that uh, after 10 or 15 years of, of taking the extract, or, or, or whatever it is, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was a pill or, or what have you, uh, some of the men ended up irreversibly sterile, and some studies said that it was in fact reversible, so who knows. But the point here isn't the efficacy of the pill he was promoting. Uh, what, what, what's important, I think, and, and, the, and the video of him saying this is in the description box, and you can watch it yourself for those of you who haven't already. Uh, the video in the, in the description box uh, des describes his appeal at the World Population Congress in Budapest to garner support for the male pill, uh, to which prominent American feminists, including Betty Friedan, were vehemently opposed. And he quotes Friedan as saying specifically, uh, Dr. Coutinho, uh, do you think we fought our whole lives to have in our hands the decision of having children or not? Do you think we're abdicating that? Uh, men say they're on the pill, women believe them. Do you know what you are, what you all deserve? Uh, to have credibility and swear you're using the pill just to get laid and leave and leave us with the responsibility and then, you know, the pill failed? Uh, that's what she said to him. And, you know, some of this could be lost in translation uh, and the way he was saying it was, wasn't very descriptive, but you get the general gist of the message. I, ca I copied this directly from the Brazilian translation in the video. And, and then he then claimed that the rest of the feminists present uh, began chanting uh, no male pill, uh, no male pill repeatedly and claimed he was told uh, we take the pill. When we want to get pregnant, we stop taking it. Uh, so, so the implication is clear. Since the presence of a male pill would not negate the existence of female birth control, uh, the only motivations behind the suppression of a male contraception is that of denying them reproductive control, uh, the same reproductive control that women have enjoyed now for decades. Uh, despite moderate feminists that swear by their ideology's benevolent aim for gender equality, we see feminists time and time again training their sights on the advent of truly benevolent advances in male power. Uh, we see feminists resisting the male pill for the purposes of securing and upholding a female monopoly on reproductive rights. It is of paramount importance, then, uh, that men actively fight for and pursue all avenues of male contraception unapologetically and as fervently as possible, stopping when and only when it is a glaring reality shining in the face of feminist hypocrisy for all to see. Now, we've had social conservatives of varying stripes uh, opposing birth control for women uh, you, you know people like like e even their 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 uh, iconoclast a social conservative presidential candidate Rick Santorum uh, wants to essentially ban birth control for women um, not, not 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 paying you know not having the state pay for it but literally just ban it altogether so that women can't take it and 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 if and if people are willing to you know these social conservative types are willing to uh, attack attack this technology um, when it comes to women and with the white with the streak of white knightism uh, that, that that runs abound in that in that atmosphere in that social conservative atmosphere what do you think they're going to do when 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 it when it comes to light that the male birth control is being developed uh, what do you think they're going to try to try to do about it then um, prepare for shaming language gentlemen it's coming let others worry about rebuilding a family structure that is completely uh, irreparable and and broken beyond repair but for men going their own way make absolutely sure by supporting this by showing a very real market for this uh, that, that you want no woman to be able to ring you into parenthood or to peg uh, a child on you that you didn't want or that you or 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 worse yet that doesn't belong to you um, make absolutely sure of this this is how we will take our freedom, gentlemen. That's all I've got to say.